our In The Hoop Project Fall Fashion Project for this week is going to be the easiest applique project you will find anywhere. Also, it's one of the easiest in the hoop projects that you will find anywhere. We are going to have a lot of fun making these in the hoop applique earrings. They are so versatile and you can make them in any type way you can imagine. The design possibilities are limitless. So join me as we have a good time making these easy in the hoop applique earrings. The tools that we will need for our easy applique earring projects are our tearaway stabilizer, two pieces if you're doing two pair of earrings like myself. And I use some really lightweight tearaway stabilizer and have a link in the description box below for all of these materials. Our vinyl fabric or whatever fabric you would like to use for your earrings. I have chosen the chalkboard vinyl fabric, the black, um, because it's inexpensive, it's a little lightweight and easy to use. You can cut your fabric into either strips. I have here a four by three inch strip, or you can do your Cricut or brother scanning cut or your silhouette and cut out your earring shapes ahead of time. So we're doing two pair of earrings. One pair of earrings will need four of these cut out. One pair of earrings will need two of these cut out. So since I'm doing two pair of earrings, I have this for the first pair and this for the second pair of earrings. The fabric that you're going to use as your applique fabric and I have chosen this draft pattern and this blue paisley looking pattern. Um, I thought those would be super cute with this black so that's why I chose those and this is just your quilters cotton. This is a little bit heavier. This is more of an interior decorating type fabric. Um, it kind of doesn't matter what fabric you use um, but it's got to be pretty pliable and easy to cut to save yourself headache. A good pair of cutting scissors. Now these are my go-to vinyl cutting scissors. These are serrated. The teeth are serrated on these scissors and they glide through vinyl like butter. So I have a link in the description below for these. These, um, and these scissors are two to the package. So you get a large pair and a small pair. Today I'm using the larger pair for our vinyl. And ultimately you need a good pair of applique scissors. These are applique scissors. They have the duck bill. This part here is called the duck bill or the bill. And these are critical in my opinion for applique. And I'll tell you, I used to run from doing applique. I hated applique because I thought it was just so difficult to do. But what I found out is these made all the difference in the world. They make it so much easier to cut out your applique and save headaches. Because one of the good things with a good applique is being able to cut close to your stitch line. And you'll see what I mean here shortly. And these fit the bill, no pun intended but these are perfect for cutting applique. There's a link to those in the description box as well. So this is your basic things that you'll need to start your earrings and to get them done. Now let's switch over to what you'll need to finish your earrings. Now these are the tools that you will need to finish your earrings. Now these are not absolutely have to have necessary. Okay, I'm going to show you what I use to finish my earrings and what you'll learn as you go along. Um, a lot of this can be changed out to something else that you may prefer. Like for instance, these are the earring hooks that I have chosen. They're called fish hooks. You don't have to use fish hooks. You don't have to use fish hooks. You can use posts. 
um, and they do have some post uh, earrings that you can use to finish out or make a pair of earrings with it um, you can purchase those but I decided to use fish hooks um, I decided to use jump rings these are six millimeter jump rings that I will be using to uh, attach my fish hook to the earring all right you don't have to use jump rings now you will need to use something because the top of the earring is a little big for just putting this on by itself but you'll see that here shortly um, and in order to finish out my earrings I use eyelets um, and the top is what these are these are eyelets that you will use to create the hole a stable hole for the jump ring and for the um, fish hook earrings to go into and you will need an eyelet set of eyelet pliers I got these from Hobby Lobby as you see they were $19.99 but of course I used the 40% off coupon um, but you have your uh, eyelet pliers that you can use to clamp your eyelets all right now you will also need a way to put a hole in the top of the earring and that's what this um, rivet tool is for now I don't have a crocodile which is a eyelet a set of eyelet pliers with a hole punch built into it I don't have that this is what I have this does not have a hole punch built into it so I have to use old school method and what you basically will do is use this uh, part with the point on it with it's got a hole in it and then you have this silver part and you'll see how it works I set the earring on top and I hammer this down onto that with the earring sandwich in between and punch a hole in it and here's my hammer for that so this was at Hobby Lobby this was at Hobby Lobby you this was at Hobby Lobby these can be purchased at Hobby Lobby if you don't have a Hobby Lobby near you most of this um, I couldn't find this at Michaels but I'm sure they have uh, something at Michaels they probably have the crocodile uh, but you can get an eyelet pliers at, Cro at uh, Michaels so these are the finishing materials that we'll need to finish our earrings all right so now that we have our finishing tools I'm gonna pull these off to the side and go over to the embroidery machine and get started one of the additional tools that I forgot to mention at the outset that would be very helpful with this project would be some sort of either spray adhesive or some tape, all right, to help hold your vinyl or your fabric in the hoop while the project is running, all right? So that's gonna be important. I'm using 40 weight um, brown thread so that you will be able to see the stitches better. Um, I'm using the 40 weight on top as well as in the bobbin. I use the same thread to run my bobbin and put in the bottom of my embroidery machine. Now, I have my project here. I'm going to go ahead and put the hoop on the machine. And again, it is hooped with tearaway stabilizer. And I have the design here. So it's just two earrings per hoop. Now, Designs by Little B also has this set up where you can do four earrings per four by four hoop, which is really cool. But for the sake of simplicity with this project, we're going to just do the two two inch earrings in the four by four hoop. So I am using the two inch size earrings in our four by four hoop with this project. So let's select those and we'll put it up in the machine. And there's only five steps with these earrings. That's how simple this project is going to be. So let's go ahead and get started. Our very first color stop is going to be our placement stitches for our vinyl fabric. Okay, so let's go ahead and stitch that out. now that that's done I'm going to trim this and pull this out so that you can see it all right so here are our placement stitches for our teardrop in the hoop applique earrings so the point of this is to let you know where to put your vinyl okay and this is going to be the front of your earrings 
So you just take one piece of your vinyl and lay it over the top of those stitches. Now a tip, you can hold it up to the light and look at the shadow that it makes as far as the shadow of the fabric to make sure that your stitches are completely covered on the front side. So that's a quick little tip, easy way to make sure that your stitches are covered. Now you can use spray adhesive at this point or tape if you feel comfortable. But because my piece is extra long, I'm just gonna hold it in place. I'm not gonna tape it down. And I only have to hold it briefly because our next number two color stop, our next stop is going to be the placement stitches for our applique fabric and that will hold our vinyl in place. All right, so I'm going to take this off and trim these long stitches. And here is the placement stitch for our applique fabric. And this is the back just to show you what it looks like. So at this point, we're ready to put our applique fabric down for the design part of the front of our earrings, the applique part. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose this, this giraffe fabric. And again, I cut it big enough for it to cover both of those um, outlines for the fabric. Now at this point, again, if you would like, you can use tape or you can use spray adhesive. I'm just gonna hold it in place for mine because it's a good bit bigger than that area. So now that we have that down, then we'll place, we'll do our number three color stop, which is the tack down stitch for our applique fabric. Right now we're getting somewhere. Let me trim this and pull this off. I'm gonna trim this stitch in between the jump stitch. And here is the applique fabric tacked down. Now this is the part of applique that can be frustrating for some, mainly because they don't have the right tools. But with applique, all you need is a good pair of applique scissors to help you get really close to that stitch line and keep from cutting through your stitch line. So what you essentially are trying to do is cut as close to that stitch line as you possibly can. Now, here's a, a closer look at that. Now, I could try and cut it in the air <laughs> and that's gonna be a little bit difficult. I'll try and hold it possibly where you can see it but here's our scissors and the duck bill is to the outside. And what that does is it helps lift that fabric while you're cutting it. And in addition, my part in helping is to hold this fabric up to allow the scissors ease of access to get up under that fabric and cut close to the stitches. And you just make little snips and you know check it as you go to get as close as you possibly can to that cut line. Now it doesn't have to be completely dead, absolute set on, but you do want to get as close as you possibly can. All right. And it's a little bit difficult to cut it up that high. So, all right. Let me show you the first one. It's not perfect but it's close and the thing is it doesn't have to be perfect because as you'll see next the satin outline stitches are actually going to cover up any imperfections in the cut line um, or the cutting that you've done on your applique fabric so i'm going to go ahead and cut out the second earring and again, a good pair of applique scissors makes all the difference in the world. And I don't use my applique scissors for anything else in the studio. I, I try really hard not to 
grab them out of habit you know like i can't find my regular scissors so i'll just grab these i try and keep them put up so that i don't pick them up i want them to stay nice and sharp so that it will cut my fabric cleanly and here is our applique fabric trimmed close to the stitch line and that's what you want you don't want it to be too much further out from your stitch line and you'll see why here shortly because now our next step our number four color stop is going to be the satin outline to your earrings and it's your next to the last stop before you're done with the embroidery part of your earrings how cool is that so let's go ahead and do our satin outline and the satin outline is going to take a while to go around both earrings so i'll speed up the video at this point so that you don't have to sit and watch it stitch the satin outline we're almost done our satin outline is finished so let me take this off and show you how this looks I'll trim these jump stitches all right so here is our satin outline now you'll notice right there in the lower right hand corner of that earring you can see where some of the strands from the fabric did peek through um, so either I didn't cut completely close to it or it frayed a little bit after I cut it um, close to the stitch line so there's a couple of ways that you could fix something like this you can either use like I have a brown outline here so you can get a brown fabric marker and touch that up um, or you possibly could do black or something of that magnitude or you can just leave it like in this case I'm going to do because these are for me I'm not really worried about it um, but that's how you do applique so just like we did on these earrings you would do on a t-shirt you it would stitch the outline to your applique design you would lay your applique fabric on top let the the tack down stitch stitch you stop your machine and then trim around that applique fabric close to your stitch line your tack down stitch line that's what it's there for so no matter what project you're doing with applique that is how you do your applique now of course there are some people who will put um heat and bond or something to that effect to allow the fabric to lay nice and smooth and to stay that way um, I choose not to do that, especially with this project, their earrings. You don't have to really worry about washing um, and having issues from that. But um, you can play around with your applique. Try a couple of shirts and practice and see how it turns out for you, whether or not you choose to go the route of putting heat and bond behind it. But with these, all we're doing is laying the fabric on top. They're just earrings. So it's a really simple applique project. Now our final step with our earrings is to put the back on our earrings because as of right now this is what the back of our earrings would look like if we stop now but we have one more color stop and that is the tack down stitch for the back of our earrings to cover up these stitches. So what we're going to do is put this fabric on the back and cover that up and allow it to complete our earrings. Now you can use spray adhesive 
or you can use tape. In my instance, I'm just going to use a little piece of tape, mainly because it's on the back side of my hoop. And I don't want the fabric shifting any when I turn this over. I want to make sure it stays in place. So when it comes to the back of uh, my embroidery project in the hoop, then yes, generally I do secure it some kind of way with at least a piece of tape. So we have this covered again. So let's put it back on the machine and do our final tack down stitch for the back of our earrings. This is it. The final step to our earrings, the embroidery part of our earrings is now complete. So let's take this off and I'll show it to you before I take it out of the hoop. Nice clean stitches, really cute design, is it not? So let's go ahead and take this out of the hoop. I'm gonna go ahead and hoop my next tearaway stabilizer so that we'll be ready for our next pair of earrings. All right, so now that that's ready, I'm gonna put this on the machine and we can go ahead and tear away our tear away stabilizer if you want to. You didn't have to do that at this step, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it here. Oh, I can leave that tape. Okay. Now, at this point, this is where our serrated vinyl scissors are going to come in handy because these will glide through the vinyl very easily and allow me to cut pretty close to that line. I don't want to get super close to it because I do like the, the clean look of a distance around that stitch line. But if you prefer to get up close to it, you absolutely can. These will be your earrings when you do the project so you can trim it however you would like. But in this instance, we're going to go a little distance away and I'm just going to go ahead and cut out my earrings by following, you know, the general shape of my stitch line. And these scissors are super sharp too, so please be careful if you do get these and use them. So that's one earring. Let's cut out the second one. And here is our second earring. How super cute is this? All right. So here is our first pair of applique in the hoop earrings completely done front and back. All right. So now that we've done our first pair with the strip of vinyl on top, let me show you how it works when you have pre cut out your shapes with your cutting machine, whether it be a Cricut, Brother Scanning Cut or your silhouette, you can cut the shapes out ahead of time. So let's start the exact same way we did the first pair and go ahead and stitch our placement stitches for our front of our earrings and that's step number one. All right, so our placement stitches for our vinyl has been done. So let's take this off. I'm gonna cut my jump stitches again. All right, and here is the teardrop shape for the front of our earrings. Now it with this, you can use spray adhesive you can use tape either way i'm going to use just a small spritz of spray adhesive to tack this down all right just a really quick squirt on that and again you can place it and then use the shadow of the vinyl on the front hold it up to the light to make sure that it's placed exactly where you want it so i'm going to move this just a little bit up 
and make sure that it's centered really good. Not that it really matters with this pair because they're mine, but I do want them to be super cute, as close as I can get it. And now I'm gonna spray the second teardrop. And there I'm gonna put that in place. And I'm gonna check this against the light and compare the two and make sure that I got it pretty close. All right. And now that that's done, I'm gonna edge you over just a little bit. Now let's put it back on the machine and do the tech, you no, know, do the placement stitches for our applique fabric for these earrings. All right, so I'm going to take this off and cut my jump stitches. You don't have to cut your jump stitches every time. I just do, they're annoying to me. So here is the front with the pre-cut shapes. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? So now let's go ahead and put our applique fabric on top where our tack, our placement stitches for our applique fabric is. Now I do wanna mention that depending upon the pattern of the fabric that you choose, you may have to you know play with it to get it lined up exactly where you want. So say for instance, if it's a fabric with paws on it, of course you will want to line that up and play with it. But mine is just general. So I'm not really worried about that, but keep that in mind when you're cutting out your applique fabric. If you want it centered, if the design on the fabric, you want it centered some kind of way, then make sure that you cut it out in a way that will allow you to center it effectively on your project. So now that we have our placement stitches for our applique fabric, we have the applique fabric laying on top. Let's go ahead and do the tack down stitches for our applique fabric. Now the process for these was exactly the same as our first pair. The only difference is our pieces were already cut out for us. So it saves us a little bit on the end of the project. We don't have to cut anything out. Now that's the cool part. But we still have to cut out our applique. So let me cut my jump stitches and pull this off so that we can go ahead and cut our applique fabric close to the stitches. All right. So. I'm cutting, trimming my jump stitches with my trim scissors. And now I'm grabbing my applique scissors to do my applique cutting. Okay, so I'm getting up close to the stitch line as I showed you before. Now this fabric frays a little bit. So it may stand up some up under the uh, satin outline. So keep that in mind too. When you're dealing with certain fabrics, you may have fraying that will stand up. So don't get too frustrated if that does happen. And if you do inadvertently cut into your stitch line, okay, as long as it's not like in this instance, our um, applique shape is pretty simple it's you know basically an ovalish type shape so for the most part if i cut into it in one little area it'll be okay because once i do the satin stitches it'll hold it down a lot better um and it'll cover that part you know unless you cut into it really bad but it's going to be difficult to see over here on this side i cut into my stitch line a little bit and i felt it when i did it but it's not going to harm anything with the applique satin outline because the outline is still going to be big enough to cover that all right but let's go ahead and put this on and do our satin outline to finish out the applique part to our earrings and the applique part to these earrings is done now so let's take this off and I'm going to trim my jump stitches. And while the satin outline was stitching out, I went ahead and um, sprayed the spray adhesive to the back part of our earrings. All 
Now, I'll show you with the satin outline again, there was some um, fraying that allowed it to stick out past the stitch line on our earring. Again, one of a couple of things could help disguise that would be again a marker or using a satin outline stitch thread color that matches the fabric and can help hide that. So maybe a white or a light blue would obscure the uh, fabric peeking out right there. Or you can try and come back with a pair of trim scissors and see if you can't trim close to it. But unfortunately, a lot of times that ends up with you cutting your satin outline stitches. So I just choose to leave well enough alone. So now at this point, we want to go ahead and put the fabric, our vinyl, to the back of our earrings on the back. Now I'm gonna go ahead and trim these jump stitches first before I put that on the back. You don't have to, it's just a matter of preference for myself. Alrighty, I have the backs on. So let's go ahead and finish our earrings by doing our final stitches. Our earrings are done. The embroidery part anyway. Here is our second pair of finished embroidered earrings. So let's go ahead and trim these jump stitches again. Our last set of jump stitches, yay. <laughs> Front and the back. And we'll go ahead and take it out of the hoop and pull our tear away stabilizer off. Now, again, the cool thing about these, because the shape was already cut out, I don't have to do any cutting out of the earrings. Okay. They're already done for me. And another tip you could possibly do is um, like I'm doing black earrings. So maybe some black tearaway stabilizer um, and you won't be able to see any of the stabilizer left behind possibly. Um, I haven't tried any yet, but that's an option. Now, there's one thing, if it's not lined up properly, as you see with this earring, you can see some of the back of the back of the rear vinyl. And you can trim that away and match it up with the front to even that out. And the cool thing is because you you have the shape already cut out, it's simple to follow and it's going to look good. So there's the cleaned up version. <laughs> and then on this one, it's just a little bit off on the side. So it's going to take some practice to get your placement just right on the back and some light to make sure that you can uh, line everything up correctly. But here is our completed pair that was cut out for us by our cutting machine. All right, so we're done with both sets of our earrings. Now what we're going to do is take these back out to the cutting table and let's work on putting the hardware on our earrings to finish them up. All right, so we're back at our hardware table and here is our completed pair of earrings, embroidery completed anyways. Now what we want to do is get the holes put in our earrings so that we can go ahead and assemble the hardware. So again, here is my hole punch tool. And for this, I only use these two pieces. And what I do is figure out exactly where I want the hole, which is about right in here. You could possibly mark it with a pen ahead of time uh, because these are mine. I'm not really that particular about it. So I'm just going to punch a hole um, about centered. And at this point, I hammer it down, give it like four good whacks. And you'll be able to see the hole come through the back. All right. There's one. And 
and there's two. All right. And I like to go ahead and get all of the holes punched. That way I can get all of this racket over and done with, with the hammer. All right. And there's the last one. And as you saw, I hammered that one clean off the table, didn't I? <laughs> so now that our holes are punched, we want to go ahead and get our eyelets put in. Okay. So I'm going to open these. And there are uh, two different types of, well, two different ways to do your eyelets. You can um, do just the one part kind, which is what I have here. There's only one piece to it. Um, or you can do the kind that has the washer on the back. I don't have that type to show you, unfortunately, but I do have these to go ahead and put in. So pretty much here's the eyelet as you see there's the hole on the inside of it that will allow us to put our hardware in so you want the smooth part to be facing the front and you push it into the hole now what i've found to ensure a good clean successful um, crimp on the back is to make sure that it's pushed all the way in pushed all the way through rather and this one is going to give me a fit because the um the red line is i cut i pushed it in close to that line but one of the things you want to do is make sure there is no fabric push all the fabric to the base of that i don't know if it's going to focus well enough for you to see that or not but that way you can get a good clean lock in on that okay so i have the first one in let me go ahead and get the tool out and we're going to unlock it this is the part that goes to the back and this is the part that's going to hold our front all right so we're going to put that in the back and then there's the front and we're going to give one solid squeeze. And that's that. That's how you put in an eyelet. Now my, my fabric didn't tear cleanly, so I went ahead and pulled that off, but there's your completed with the eyelet earring. So let's move to our next three. Again, we want the smooth, clean part to the front, push it through. Make sure that all the fabric is around the base of that eyelet out of the way. The post or the protrusion goes to the back. And one smooth squeeze. And there's our number two. All right. So let's move to the giraffe earrings. So our eyelets are in place on all of our earrings now what we want to do is put our jump rings in place and let me show you why so here is our fish hooks or here are our fish hooks that's three we need one more for the two pair and now this part here at the bottom opens up and will allow us to slip our earring on it and then close it back up the problem is it's way too small for it to fit right in here so that's what we need the jump rings for to give us extra clearance to put the hoop of our fish hook in so let's go ahead and pull out four of these jump rings and I use the six millimeter jump rings. You can go bigger or smaller. It's entirely up to you. Now these jump rings, it would be much easier if I had pliers right here beside me, uh, but I do not. So what I'm going to do is instead of trying to pull it open this way, 
I'm going to try to twist it open just like so. And you see how now it's got a split in it that hopefully we can get our earring wedged right in there just like so. All right, now let's see if we can get this jump ring to cooperate. And I'm gonna squeeze that back shut. There we go. And it looks like six millimeter might be just, just too small. So you may wanna try using, uh, instead of six millimeter, maybe eight millimeter or nine. I'm not sure what the next step up is. I think 10, something to that effect. But for right now, we're gonna make it work. <laughs> so let's go ahead and open up the bottom of our fish hook. And let's slip this on. And now let's close it up. And that's pretty much how I put my earrings together. And now we have a completed earring. Super cute. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and finish the rest of them. Um, so that you can see the completed pair. And our earrings are done. So let's try them on and see how we look. So how did you do? Was it as easy as I told you it would be? Applique is not hard. You just have to have the right tools. And in the hoop projects don't have to be hard either. And they can be super cute as the second part of our fall fashion video series. So stay tuned for our next fall fashion design that's going to be in the hoop as well. And learn another new technique that will help you out in your studio and make you quite fashionable at the same time so i appreciate you joining me for this simple easy in the hoop applique earring tutorial you can find this design at the website designs by littlebee.com where she has the cutest in the hoop projects for you to enjoy and the price you can't beat it for the month of october 2018 that we're in now so run on over there grab this design it's called applique earrings and you will not regret your decision because these are super cute and they can be so versatile and be done in so many different ways i really think you'll definitely enjoy this project well Thank you for being here and until the next time I see you, have happy embroidering.